I want to bring in Mr. Jha uh, on this point. Uh, Mr. Jha, this breakthrough of MIRVs, what has it been for India's nuclear arsenal and our deterrent posture? Of course, General Shankar has mentioned one aspect of it. What is the bigger picture in the decades ahead? We always talk about how we are falling behind in numbers when it comes to Pakistan and China. And you're, uh, we are always reminded that we are facing both these nuclear ar arsenals aimed at us. Uh, see, the missile concept over the decades have gone drastic changes. Gone are the days when India is to have that concept of Patna, that is Prithvi Range, Agri yes. Range, right. Trishul, Nar, Akash, blah, blah. Right. Right. Today is the time of a hybridization of the missile. Yes. Today you can have a missile which has got the complex features. And in that, India also has matched with most of the advanced nation. You know, yesterday we had Agni 5, before yes. that we had Agni Prime. Right. You know, Agni 1, 2 and 3 has got now the capability of Agni 5. Yes. In the range. But the MIRV capability of uh, uh, Agni 5 has been given to those Agni 2 and 3 as well, 4 as well. Right. So you, th that is how the concept is going changes. Gone are the days when there is to be only the cruise missile and the ballistic missile. Today yes. we have got the space. Right. And today China have got the re relaunch vehicle which can have missile into it. Yes. Uh, US has got the, NASA has got the, uh, a vehicle which has got which can have missile into it right. though un has given a, a deterrence or or the uh, um, uh, you know sort of a hurdle that you can't use space for the weaponization yes but who yes. knows who knows you cannot attack another country yeah there is a, a, a war going on in, right. in two or three places. so this kind of future proofs uh, india's nuclear arsenal you know, that's what you're seeing it yeah uh, it allows you know, us to I'm, handle a, a range of threats what I'm going to caution you, yesterday we had, uh, uh, I don't know whether you were there, uh, uh, the anchor yesterday, when I said... Uh, the my colleague Karthike was the anchor, yes. Karthike was there. He had his eyes wide open because I'm a resigned scientist. You can call me group captain, Dr. Vien Jha. I had a stint with uh, Air Force. So I am been user of the missile system, yes. and I'm also the designer scientist uh, who can design everything. So for the design, everything is possible. Yesterday, when I told him that in the coming years there could be a missile of uh, velocity of 25 mat, yes. his eyes were wide open. Right. You know, when I was I was mentioning to you the China and U.S. capability of having the relaunch vehicle and missile into it in the orbit. Yes. Orbital velocity of any of these systems are about 25 to 27 Mach. Right. And from that 25, 27 Mach, when you release those weapons. Yes. From those fourth dimension, from the, from the space. From space, yes. We all talk about the nuclear triad, which is a combination of uh, land, air and undersea launched uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, could the MIRV that we've now developed for the Agni 5, could it have applications across platforms? For instance, could fighter jets now carry smaller warheads? Could our submarine-launched ballistic missiles have MIRVs fitted on them? Yes, uh, Sandeep, it's very much possible to integrate a small uh, nuclear weapon right. uh, with uh, many platforms right. and many missiles which are much sleeker. Yes, uh, they can also carry it. Right, and you see. Uh, there is one interesting development has taken place in the past few years. Uh, we have been talking about Triad, but there yes. is another fourth dimension coming up. Right. That is, a, you can integrate it to a pseudo satellite also. You know, yes. that's uh, uh, slightly above than the high altitude uh, drone. Right. So uh, it gives uh, enormous capability and right. uh, enormous imagination to yeah. our uh, armed forces to think. Uh, how to use it uh, but most important thing is right. that uh, now we have the capability uh, of a miniaturized nuclear weapon yes. and this capability can be uh, used in several imaginative manner right uh, what i feel uh, that tried of course it can be used it can right. be used on the land vector uh, it can be used uh, in the uh, ocean it can be used yes. in the air Right. And uh, what what I feel 
uh, what I believe that we would uh, there would never be any uh, you know uh, opportunity to use it right. other than creating a deterrence. Deterrence, uh, but absolutely. In fact, let's show our uh, doctor, uh, uh, Doctor Mishra. We just want to show our viewers what a triad actually means, so that there's a quick representation that we have. A triad is essentially. Uh, as I mentioned, a troika of uh, nuclear weapons that can be delivered from a variety of platforms. There are nuclear submarines that can launch uh, uh, nuclear uh, tip ballistic missiles, SLBMs. We uh, believe there's going to be a test of one of these very uh, soon. There's uh, fighter jets that can drop uh, nuclear weapons, the gravity bombs. And of course, you have uh, ground-based uh, mobile missile launchers uh, that fire Agni 5s uh, missiles. Uh, ICBMs like the one that you see here, that was what was tested uh, on the uh, uh, 11th of March. So this, in short, actually energizes India's triad. The fact that we've now developed the capability to integrate MIRVs onto nuclear missiles, as our experts were mentioning, that it allows us to uh, field smaller missiles with lighter warheads uh, and potentially, you know, even carry, be, allow them to be carried on fighter jets like uh, the Mirage that you saw there. But uh, General Shankar, going forward, what do you think is the next breakthrough that you would see in our nuclear arsenal? This is one big step. I mean, admittedly, we've been very late in catching up with the rest of the world with a P-5. What is the next step now? Hypersonic uh, missiles? Look, uh, I'll put it this way. Uh, you have the triad capability. But what you really need is the ability to, to launch underwater. Right. And that's the that's the cutting edge of a triad. Yes. The tri the, it's not the air capability or the land capability. So you you have Agni 5, which is today ground launched. Yes. But you need to have this going underwater right. in a submarine and yes. fired. Right. The co the complementarity of this has to be with air independent propulsion. Yes. So the day you have air independent propulsion or nuclear nuclear propulsion, yes. a nuclear sub, if I may say, mated with a missile with MERV, yeah, which can fire underground. Uh, I mean, uh, from under the water, yes, under the water, then you are in a different ball game altogether. Right. Okay, that's a whole new story. Now coming to a hypersonic missile system. Uh, getting a hypersonic missile system is, uh, uh, I don't think, a very great thing. I think right. we sh should be able to get it yeah. and make it. And fitting a MERV on that also, I don't think, is out of the equation. I think we should be able to do it. Right. But what's important is what the Chinese have uh, right. achieved. And you have to acknowledge it and understand and then go to that. That's the step I look at. Right. It. Right. So what the Chinese have done... The, the much touted uh, hypersonic missile system of the Chinese, yeah. which took the world by surprise, is it was a combination of a hypersonic glide vehicle yes. with a fractional orbit bombardment right. system. FOBS. That yeah. is FOBS. Yeah. So that is what we need. That's the next step, logical right. step where we yes. go. And uh, if you say, do we have the technology to do that? Well, we have most of the components of the technology. Like I said, right. we have the strategic right. independence of these uh, components. Yes. How do you put it together is right. the next challenge. Right. And, and, and in any case, all these have to go step by step. It have, yes. You have to go through it incrementally. Right. And we have to, right? At the same time, it doesn't mean that you are uh, disadvantaged in any yes. case. Like I told you, the whole nuclear game is not about numbers. Right. It is about ability. The whole nuclear game is about numbers. It's about ability. Of course, that's the game of uh, nuclear deterrence. But I want to uh, ask my last question to Mr. Jha. The fact that we're hearing, Mr. Jha, that there could be a submarine-launched ballistic missile test very soon. We have, uh, we have seen the NOTAM that was issued recently, which extends all the way from uh, Balasore right down to the uh, northern Indian Ocean. Is it possible that we could be testing a K-4 or a K-5 missile and is it possible in the not so distant future that this SLBM could indeed have MIRVs like the one that the Agni had, uh, that the one that was tested just yesterday? Your thoughts? Look, we already have tested K-15, uh, yes. that is already tested. Now is the K-4, K-5 and K-6. These three are all lined up. 
uh, all having all being at the different stage of their uh, trials. Right. You see, the nuclear platform is not only a submerged platform. Yeah. You can take the nuclear missile much beyond your territory. Right. So that in case if you have got a restrictions of the range, yes, you can go into any of the sea, uh, yes. remain uh, hidden there for a uh, time, and when you launch the same uh, say Agni five from there yes. with a range of uh, you know five to eight thousand kilometers, you can achieve those five km five thousand kilometers apart uh, away from the Indian territory. Yes. So, so as to achieve the ten thousand kilometers distance or right. uh, uh, twelve thousand kilometers distance. Absolutely. You know, this mobility of the of, of the submerged platform. Yes. You know, basically either the ship or the submarine right. that gives the difference. Now coming back to your question that whether we can go for K four K five, it is yes. already planned. Right. There is one problem there in that. You know. Yes. The Agni five. Now you can't test it from the. Uh, the submarine platform because yes. it's too the, big for the, the, the platform the, yes i'm afraid uh, mr javed completely out of time here we are going to keep our fingers crossed on the whether it's going to be a k4 or a k5 test the no time that's been issued and we are going to come back to you for another discussion on this but i want to thank my experts who joined us uh, this evening uh, dr sudhir mishra mr jha General Ravi Shankar and of course my colleague Deepak Badana who's not had a chance to ask a question because the discussion just had, was so interesting. But uh, thank you all for joining us and uh, we'll be talking to you very shortly about a proposed new test of a K-4 or a K-5 missile. But this is a game changer for India's nuclear arsenal and our experts just told you why. It allows us to develop much smaller nuclear weapons, deploy them on a variety of platforms. Streaming on News 9 Plus. News is now content. Subscribe and get free vouchers.